Hello friends, this is lesson number 33 in the series of criticism in English literature and uh, in this lesson we shall start a journey with I.A. Richards. In the previous lesson I gave you a brief introduction to new criticism and uh, even I mentioned there that uh, I.A. Richards is considered as the pioneer of new criticism or practical criticism. He was a British scholar and uh, he was born in the year 1883 and died in the year 1979. Among his important work of criticism, the first we have that is Practical Criticism, published in the year 1929. Subtitle to this work is A Study of Literary Judgment. In this work, he talks about four types of meanings. Four types of meanings. These are sense, feeling, tone, and intention. According to him, in any statement, we can find these four types of meaning in any statement. And uh, for sense, first he says, sense is factual thing. What writer wants to convey to the reader that is sense for feeling he says that what is the attitude of the writer towards the subject how intend the writer is it can be biased unbiased depending upon the situation and tone the third meaning tone attitude of the writer towards the reader so we have feeling it is the attitude towards the subject and the tone is attitude towards the reader or the audience. And the fourth one is intention. It can be conscious or unconscious, but it is the desire behind the statement. So what is the desire by the speaker or by the writer? That is intention. So I.A. Richards says that collectively these four types of meanings, collectively they produce the total meaning of the statement. In some statements you find tone is dominating, in other statements you find that intention is dominating and uh, in other statements you may find that uh, feeling or sense are dominating. We can take several examples for this. In scientific reports or in mathematical statement we see that the sense is dominating. We simply tell the things factually. There are no emotions or no other things. Only the factual things are there when you have any scientific report. Maybe any medical report there are factual things that your BP is something or your blood sugar is something means only factual thing. And for intention, he says that uh, whenever you listen to any politician, what are their intention that we can uh, easily see in their speech? So most of the time, the political speeches are intention driven. So the intentional meaning is there in the political speeches. The tone dominates in the instruction. For example, you are a teacher and you are giving instruction to the teacher, or oh sorry, to the students. And that time the tone of the teacher that dominate in the instruction. You are saying that go to your classroom. So here tone is more important than the other three. And then feeling most of the time he says that when someone is addressing to the self-made things, then comes feeling. Like you have written a poetry or you have, a, draw, you have drawn a painting, then you have to talk about that poetry or painting. There comes your feelings. So in different situations, the different part of that meaning means we have four types of meanings. So that dominate in different situations. So collectively they produce the total meaning of that particular statement. So remember four types of meanings the term or this concept is given by I.A. Richards and it is mentioned in the book that is named as 
practical criticism. Actually, there is one more work by him that is The Meaning of Meaning by I.A. Richards. And uh, be careful, do not uh, relate the four types of meaning, this concept to this work, The Meaning of Meaning. The four types of meaning, this concept is given in the book Practical Criticism. So the other book which I mentioned, The Meaning of Meaning, this book has a subtitle a study of the influence of language upon the thought and of the science of symbolism and it was published in the year 1923 and in fact this book was uh, collaboratively written by I.A. Richards and C.K. Ogden C.K. Ogden then there is one more uh, book that is Philosophy of Rhetoric, Philosophy of Rhetoric, published in the year 1936. And then comes one more, that is Principle of Literary Criticism, published in the year 1924. In this book, I.A. Richards talk about the two usage of language. There are two particular usage of language. The first one is scientific usage. This concept is quite similar to the earlier that we discussed four types of meaning. So the first usage is scientific usage. More factual, objective, to the point and making statement uh, either true or false. So everything is just factual. We cannot really uh, produce different meaning from what is said. If I am saying the book is lying on the table, it means on the table. So it is simply a factual statement that is scientific usage. The second is the emotive usage. So what is the emotive usage? It is quite contra uh, contrary to the earlier one. When we are expressing our emotions, feelings, that is emotive usage. Most of the time in the poetry, what you find that is emotive usage not the factual factually something that you are stating that this and this and this but in emotive you are expressing your emotions your feelings which cannot be scientifically measured so that is emotive usage and uh, it brings effect in the poetry good effects in the poetry so that's uh, all we have to discuss about i.e richards four types of meanings and the other concept is about the two uh, usage of the or two types of usage of the language the scientific usage and emotive usage so there are several questions asked uh, about uh, his theories or his uh, concepts the first is practical criticism this term is coined by i a. richards then there is one more factor that I forgot to tell you that is when he was making uh, research or doing research uh, on uh, criticism or practical criticism at that time what he tried that once in a classroom he gave a passage or a stanza of poetry or something to all his students there may be number of students and uh, he asked them that uh, analyze or criticize this stanza go home and study this and analyze and he didn't tell them that uh, this stanza belonged to this particular writer or it is written by that uh, writer nothing he simply gave them the stanza only only the text he gave them and the next day what he found that the analysis made by several students or all these students were quite different all students were thinking in different, uh, you can say, sections of the society. They were not going into one particular. Means there were variety of answers. Similar way, if I say that, okay, take this line to be or not to be, or it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. You can give this line to number of people. If they are not familiar to uh, the writer or the book from which these uh, lines are coming then you will find that there will be variety of answers so the same way i.a richards experienced that the 
text must be independent of its uh, means uh, from its uh, uh, writer or author so the same was asked once in the question uh, paper that ia richards experimented with his students and was quite shocked by which by the uh, poor quality of students stock response now understand this poor quality of a student's stock response stock response is ordinary response which is quite similar but he was saying that the response were not similar the response were quite different from each other so that was a question and the next one the book practical criticism by ia richards there are four kinds of meanings which are sense feeling tone and intention and one more question the practical criticism this book what is the subtitle of this book uh, a study of literary judgment so that's all we have in this lesson so try to remember the four types of meanings sense intention tone and feeling and two uh, usage of language scientific and emotive and the experiment which i told you just uh, uh, a few minutes before and uh, he is the pioneer of uh, new criticism he coined the term practical criticism and don't forget to remember the names of the books by him the meaning of meaning practical criticism philosophy of rhetoric and principle of literary criticism so that's enough for this lesson have a great day and enjoy learning english literature